Welcome to the Pop Filler Podcast. My name is Philip. Let's check the mailbag. Okay, this is kind of a spooky question that comes from Bernard H. He writes, There are plenty of great horror movies out there I know I should watch, but I haven't because, frankly, I don't really like feeling scared. Any tips? Hi, Bernard. I don't really like feeling scared either. I'd say my recommendation is to watch potentially scary movies during the daytime. And go ahead and open any curtains or blinds to get a good glare on the screen. This will really help bleach out those darker scenes that tend to be the scariest. Also, turn the sound down so that abrupt noises are less likely to startle you. I've actually started watching everything this way, and while I'm pretty sure I'm missing whole chunks of story, I do have to assume that I'm getting the general gist of whatever I'm watching. Well, All Hallows' Eve approaches. It's time to go to the Haunted Corner. I've long suspected that the corner of the room in my home that I record this podcast might actually be haunted. So I've downloaded a mobile app that's supposed to sense and track ghosts to help me check my theory out. So I'm opening up the app. It says that it's calibrating some different measurements for the sensors, and I've given it permission to use my camera. It's showing sort of a film-negative version of the room. There's a little radar at the bottom of the screen, and it's trying to get readings. Well, that was fast. I see a little glowing dot on the radar. It's showing that a ghost is in the vicinity. I knew it. So the dot is a little bit out of my line of sight according to this radar, so I'm going to move the phone around to see if I can get a look at this restless spirit. Okay, I'm turning, turning, trying to catch a glimpse. Oh, I'm going to turn again. The dot keeps showing that ghost is behind me, but behind me is outside. And I don't want to go out there because it's chilly and I'd have to put shoes on. I think this ghost is trying to play games. Wait, there it is. It's hovering in plain view. Its outline is small, like maybe the size of a fairy or a sprite. It's sort of a blob with outstretched arms, and it has a little line on top that I guess is supposed to be its thin face. I've tapped the photograph button, captured a picture of it now, and now the app has taken me to a furniture ad. So I'm going to go back. This app also has a feature that lets me ask the ghost questions. So let me click on that and see what it's about. It says that I can ask a yes or no question. Okay, here we go. Do you have any unfinished business in this place? Then I click here to get the answer. Oh, uh, it says that it's $3 for the ability to receive answers. I think that this ghost might have some skin in this app game, which is sort of ironic. I guess I won't worry too much about the answer. A little haunting hasn't hurt me so far. You're welcome to stay and share this room. I hope that me saying that free of charge is okay for you. Well, hopefully things stay friendly here in Haunted Corner. It's now time to review the thing. As I've previously stated, I'm on a mission to review every item that we own one at a time. So in the spirit of Halloween, I'm going to review a small plastic jack-o'-lantern that we put out during the month of October. Okay, as I said, this jack-o'-lantern is small. I'm going to guess it's about five inches tall, but let me check. No, it's only about three and a half inches tall. I'm still working on guessing the measurements of things. And it is a jack-o'-lantern versus being just a pumpkin, because it has a face. Face is made up of two round, sunken-in eyes, and a friendly smile that's showing about seven misshapen teeth. So I think they did an all right making it look like a pretty classic looking jack-o'-lantern. And the plastic is painted orange, but there's some additional gradients to the orange that makes it look a little more realistic, even though I don't know if realism was the goal here. If I look through the face openings to the hollow innards, there's a small white bulb and three wires because, yes, this jack-o'-lantern does light up. 
Sadly, the AAA battery that was inside has expired and leaked acid onto the housing there. So I'm going to just swap out the battery now to see if it still works when I turn it on. So I'm taking out the crusty old battery. I'm adding in the new and put the cover back on. Now I'm going to flip the switch. And it does slowly flicker inside. It's a good flame-like effect. Now it's switched modes, and now it's just sort of blinking. About a half second on, half second off. So maybe the initial flickering wasn't intentional. I actually wish it would stop blinking like this, because it doesn't really look like a flame at all anymore. And given the blinking, I don't think that this decoration would work well in your periphery while turned on. It's distracting. I could see placing it in a window or a porch display, as long as there's no risk of it getting wet. So scoring-wise, I think I'll give this fig jack-o'-lantern a score of blue. Okay, this thing's been reviewed. It's now time that I face one of my fiercest fears. I'm scared of accidentally poisoning myself. Most homes are full of poisonous products. To be fair, to be poisoned by them, you first have to ingest them. But that's as easy as reaching for the mouthwash and accidentally gargling bleach, or squirting out plumber's goop onto my toothbrush and going to town on my lower left mouth quad before I realize what I've done. Also, I don't think I'm allergic to any foods, but what if I decide to try eating something new and accidentally stumble on something that my body wants to reject but can't because my throat's closed up? That's like trick poison, which might be even worse. Needless to say, I like to keep things stored very consistently and intentionally, so I don't reach for the wrong item and accidentally poison myself. That's why things being stored in the wrong place is one of my fiercest fears. Before we wrap things up, it's time for household tips. When do you decorate for Halloween? October 1st? October 15th? October never? In reality, decorating for Halloween could be a months-long process, yet one that actually takes no effort at all. All you have to do is not dust your home and give cobwebs a fighting chance to form. It'll give your home a spooky sheen and that haunted house atmosphere that so many try to manufacture year after year through buying yarn and stretched out cotton fibers. So here's the tip. Don't dust your home so you can build up cobwebs for your Halloween decorating. Bonus tip. Introduce some non-poisonous tangleweb spiders into your home to jumpstart the webbing process. They tend to have the best sticky webs for attracting dust. Okay, that'll do it for another pop filler. Thanks for listening, and remember, you'll be fine. Do you have any unfinished business in this place?